redeemed, rehabilitated, and real entertaining. This is the Carl Jackson Podcast. Welcome to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show, or welcome to this Wednesday edition of the Carl Jackson Show Podcast. I'm glad that you could join me today. Uh, guys, I don't feel uh, despair. Uh, we, uh, we're we're going to be talking about the big elephant in the room here shortly, and that is the Georgia Senate runoff race. Although I'm disappointed, I do not feel despair. Uh, we will get into that shortly. I'll explain uh, the reasons why. Uh, there's some news that I do want to talk to you about that's very interesting, and obviously it's Pearl Harbor Memorial Day, uh, so we uh, want to uh, respect the uh, those, uh, obviously, and the memory of those who died that day, over 2,400 people that were killed, 1,100 uh, people that were uh, injured in that surprise attack by Japan on Pearl Harbor, our naval base Pearl Harbor in, in Hawaii. And listen, it's important that we remember these dates. It's important that we remember the sacrifices that soldiers made before us in order to give us the freedoms and the liberties that we're blessed to have today, despite the fact that the left is trying valiantly to take away our liberties, our civil liberties, and to undermine the Constitution uh, as it is written. So anyway, I do want to give, listen, I just want to give uh, some time to uh, just uh, remember uh, the the you know, the fallen obviously on that day remember the date itself obviously it was a very long time ago uh, so it's going to be hard to find people that are still alive that endured that uh, tragic that tragic attack on Pearl Harbor uh, but nonetheless that is just another example of how men that put on the uniform sacrifice their lives so that we might be free and we should always take the time and opportunity to bless them. Uh, and to thank them, I mean, those that are gone, those that are serving now, I know the military is woke, but by and large, that's going to be the leadership, uh, not necessarily our troops. So God bless our troops. Uh, God bless those that are, are are alive and fighting. God bless those who help to uh, uh, help to secure our freedoms and our liberties as a result of paying uh, of them paying the ultimate sacrifice. OK. So again, a lot that I want to get to. I do want to remind you to please subscribe to the podcast wherever the podcast can be found. Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube, and Rumble. Also, you can find it at uh, thecarljacksonshow.com. That's an easy place to go. Salempodcastnetwork.com. Follow me on social media, The Carl Jackson Show. And guys, I want to tell you guys about a new sponsor that we have. I'm so excited to bring the Epic TV on board. And uh, man, we want to thank our friends at Epic TV for sponsoring the show. This is, uh, I mean, just honestly, uh, when I found out the news, I was just... uh, just delayed it, man. So excited. It, it, it is so nice to have an organization like Epic TV willing to support this uh, podcast. Epic TV, as you know, or maybe those are, maybe some of you don't know, but Epic TV is a censorship free video platform with original news like Crossroads, the Larry Elder show now exists there. Facts matter. American thought leaders and documentaries investigating critical issues that are not covered anywhere else. As a matter of fact, even if you go to epictimes.com and sub- subscribe there, the work that they do there is magnificent. So Epic TV, man, get the news fast. Hear what you want. It's going to be exciting. Uh, why do we trust Epic Times? I'll tell you why. They're unbiased. They report important news that other media ignore. They focus on clear Fact-based journalism without spin or hidden agendas. They are truthful, so you can trust them. They report just the facts and trust their discerning viewers, those uh, uh, like you and I, uh, to be able to uh, look at the facts, look at their stories, and, and, and then arrive at our own conclusions, right? That's what we want from journalists. They're resilient, all right? So despite the attacks from many sides, uh, defamation from other media, thugs burning of their printing presses and assaulting their journalists, the Epic Times continue to dedicate themselves to reporting the truth. And obviously this is, you guys have seen how vital this is in today's culture. We'll get into the JCPA hopefully being squashed in just a second there. So going back to Epic Times, if you're looking for an unbiased, a truthful, and a resilient news source, Check them out today, por favor. Uh, por favor, we have a, you like that, Gabe? We have a special offer for our viewers. Just sign up and start watching 
No credit card required. No strings attached whatsoever. If you decide to uh, subscribe within 14 days, all right, it's just $1 for two months. That is unbelievable. And I don't think you'll go back, all right? So uh, go to watchepic.com slash Carl Jackson. Again, uh, watchepic.com slash Carl Jackson and subscribe. That's watch, the word watch, W-A-T-C-H, epic, E-P-O-C-H. So watchepic.com slash Carl Jackson. Uh, and then you can get this fantastic deal for you know, uh, 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 just one dollar for two months of Epic TV. You cannot beat that with a bat. Again, you're going to watch unbiased, truthful news in Epic TV on any device. The special offer for our viewers. Again, just sign up and start watching. No credit required. No strings attached. If you t- decide to su- subscribe within 14 days, it's just one dollar for two months. Again, go to watch epic.com watch epic e-p-o-c-h dot com slash carl jackson that's where you go to subscribe i'm so honored to have these people on board we need real journalists that are in the fight like those that exist at epic times at epic tv all right and right here at the salem uh news podcast uh network all right so now let me get to the well actually let me get let me give you some good news all right let me give you some good news. This is this is very important. Again, I'm not in despair, despite the fact that we should have won the Senate. Uh, it wasn't a favorable year for us to win the Senate, all right? It wasn't a favorable year. Our year comes in 2024 if we have a Republican Party that's willing to fight and can mount a ground game with all of these ballot initiatives uh, that the Democrats have set up, the infrastructures that they've set up across the country. We've got to be able to meet them. I know a lot of uh, a lot of you don't like this idea. I get it. I get it. Demo- I mean, Republicans don't like playing dirty. Unfortunately, to save our country, we may have to play their game with ballot harvesting wherever it is legal. Absentee ballot all that stuff wherever it is legal. Okay, so having said that, I do want to share uh, some good news, all right? So now, uh, hat tip just the news, COVID vaccine mandate for military has been dropped from the defense bill despite Biden's opposition. So Democrats and Republicans on the House and Senate Armed Services Committee have agreed to drop the COVID-19 vaccine mandate from the annual defense bill, despite Biden's opposition. The new language of the bill, according to Just the News, without the vaccine mandate has to be adopted by the full House and Senate to become law. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy had maintained that the National Defense Authorization Act would not move forward with the vaccine mandate included. The California Republican confirmed the mandate has been removed from the legislation in a statement on Tuesday evening where he said, and I quote, the end of President Biden's military COVID vaccine mandate is a victory for our military and for common sense. Last week, I told the president, again, I'm quoting a a soon to be Speaker of the House, more than likely Kevin McCarthy. Last week, I told the president directly, it's time to end the COVID vaccine mandate and rehire our service members. While I applaud the end of this onerous mandate, the Biden administration must go further. Unfortunately, the mandate has already had negative consequences for our military, and he could not be further from the truth. You have John Kirby, the uh, National Security Council spokesman uh, that's against it. Also, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin that support the vaccine mandate. Screw them. They're just de- they're destroying our military. I don't think this is going to help with recruitment, uh, to be frank with you. Uh, not as if I'm not frank with you ever, but I don't think this is going to help with recruitment simply because who's the commander in chief? Joe Biden. Nobody wants to go into the military under Joe Biden's leadership or not many people want to go into the military under Joe Biden's leadership. He's a weak leader. Everybody knows it. Uh, They're woke. Everybody knows it. Uh, And that is not the military that most uh, people that are going in second, third, fourth generation soldiers uh, envision. That's not what their fathers experienced or their mothers. That's not what their grandfathers experienced. They do not want any part of the military. But hopefully this will stop the bleeding. Right. Of those that are already in the military or, uh, you know, that are 
that are either somewhat new or have been in for a period of time. Hopefully it'll stop the bleeding where people will no longer be forced to leave our military. So that is good news. So I do want to share with you some good news. Here's a, another piece of good news if it maintains. And this is uh, this is also within this uh, National Defense Authorization Act bill. So I uh, had to Breitbart severe blowback on effort to include media cartel bill, JCPA and defense bill forces congressional leaders to remove it from the bill. Hat tip to you guys. All right. Many of you probably picked up your your phones and called 202-224-3121, a number you guys need to <laughs> keep on speed dial. That's the switchboard number to get a hold of your congressmen or uh, senators in Washington, D.C., 202-224-3121. Make sure you keep that on speed dial because you're going to have to use it. Then when you get to the operating board, they'll direct you or you'll have to direct them where you want to go. You know, Senator this, Congressman this, and they'll send you directly to their switchboard where you can leave a message because we're all going to have to become active. But giving you this information, congressional leaders stripped from the annual defense package, a controversial proposal that would have allowed media organizations to create cartels to collectively bargain with big tech companies, um, big tech companies, text of the Nas National Defense Authorization Act released on Tuesday evening shows. The revelation that the JCPA or the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act has been stripped from the text of the NDAA after congressional leaders had agreed to include it just days ago in a massive development that comes after congressional leaders were caught off guard by the swift and severe blowback to the effort. All right. So good. I had tip to you guys. All the JCPA would have done was made it extremely hard for independent journalists, people that exist like myself, podcasters, talk radio hosts, uh, you know, any of these uh, independent journalists that you see out there that are actually giving you the real news. Epic TV, our new sponsor, praise the Lord. All right. Uh, it would have made it extremely difficult for people like us to be able to compete against these phonies that are in corporate media that are kissing the behinds of the Democrat Party that are totally complicit in the uh, just the, the the scandal and the abuses that we see in Washington, D.C. from the big tech corruption, which I'll get into shortly, because there is a bit of good news from that as well, with James Baker being uh, fired or Jim Baker, whatever his freaking name is. I know I want to get it right. Jim Baker being fired. We'll talk about that swiftly. That's more good news. But this JCPA is very, very, very good news, right? Being stripped uh, from the bill. And so is this vaccine mandate. That's a start. This is how we have to fight. You know, right now in this lame duck session, the Democrat Party, is they're trying to get an omnibus bill passed. They want an assault weapons ban. I hate calling it assault weapons. They want a self-defense weapons ban or a sporting rifle, uh, uh, sporting rifles ban is what they want. Uh, Lord willing, they will not get it. But Republicans have to fight and you have to call 202-224-3121. The out of touch Senator Mitch McConnell was going to go ahead with the JCPA, uh, and and it's not going to happen now. The Journalism Competition and Pre uh, Preservation Act is not going to happen now. Let me just read this part. The removal of the proposal is a massive win for conservatives after sweeping criticism from across the politi uh, political spectrum came in the wake of reports that Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell had caved Huh, no surprise there to Democrats on this, but particularly criticism among Republicans who were shocked leaders had agreed to include the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act, JCPA, in the NDAA, the National, De National Defense Authorization Act. Several GOP senators joined in the chorus of critics in public and private, ripping the push to shred and delay the release of the NDAA's final text by more than a full day and throwing the final weeks of this lame duck Congress, Congress into disarray. Isn't this, I mean... Uh, it, it, this is this is so sad and sickening uh, that Mitch McConnell would participate in this type of nonsense. But there he is caving and acquiescing. But thank God enough of you called enough of you spoke out enough of you uh, uh, shared your feelings about this. Uh, and it's not going to happen as a result. And thank God some senators stood up as well. Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell, in particular, multiple sources with knowledge of the matter told Breitbart News was caught flat footed in response after he had this weekend acquiesced to demands from Senate leader uh, Chuck Schumer and outgoing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to include the JCPA in the NDAA 
only House GOP leader, Kevin McCarthy, the likely next Speaker of the House, uh, was fighting at all or, or fighting it uh, fighting it all along among the vaunted four corners, the so-called four leaders of the two chambers of Congress. So this guy, Kevin McCarthy, give him props. Three against one, he was standing to make sure that the JCPA was not included in the Defense Authorization Act or the defense bill. And this would have been so stupid because we are going to take over the House starting uh, beginning January 3rd. And there was no need for Mitch McConnell to make a deal without going Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. And we know that Chuck Schumer is going to remain as uh, going to remain the the Senate leader. And he was going to anyway, regardless of the outcome of last night. But he certainly has more power uh, or will have more power be, uh, beginning in January uh, than he currently has now with a uh, with a true majority in the Senate, which we'll get into shortly. But uh, there was no need for Mitch McConnell to make a deal in the lame duck session with Democrats. That's our problem. Republicans don't know how to win. They're too comfortable with being weak. And that is a big problem. I'm sorry, weak Republicans are not only complicit in the in, in the decline of America, I believe they are just as much. I know that I don't say this to be hyperbolic. I'm sure there's plenty of you that might agree with me, but I have come to the conclusion that weak Republicans are just as much an existential threat to America as the radical leftists that want to destroy it. Because if you don't sit, stand your butt up and fight for your country, we lose it. We lose it. If you don't get it, if you're out of touch like the Mitch McConnells of the world, we will lose this country. And we are well on that slippery slope to doing just that. However, I will not, I will not, I will not uh, despair. Let me give you some more good news real quick, all right? So Musk fires Jim Baker. Now, this is very. Um, this is a very important uh, piece of news. Now, I'll share as you why. Now, I told you today that we were going to have a Kara Frederick on from the Heritage Foundation. Unfortunately, her newborn uh, got a fever. She is not able to come on. She's an expert when it comes to all things social media. Uh, she heads up the Heritage's foundations, their organization, their their department that deals with all things social media. Uh, she's a genius when it comes to this stuff, uh, can, uh, not just social media, but laws and legislation, regulation, how it impacts you and I. Uh, so hopefully she will be with us later in the week, but she had to tend to her newborn. So God bless her for that. So, but we will have someone on here to make sure that we delve into this uh, big time because uh, this is still a very important story. Actually, it is the most important story. That is you have a president of the United States that's totally corrupted. Let me take a swig, sorry. <clears throat> you have a president of the United States and Joe Biden that's totally corrupted, uh, and you have a, a DOJ that's helped to uh, that's helped to hide some of his corruption, if not much or all of his corruption. So this is a very important story. But hat tip, hat tip to the Federalist, Twitter CEO Elon Musk fired Jim Baker. That's the company's deputy general, basically uh, deputy general general counsel. That's their lead attorney. All right, on Tuesday, uh, after an unconvincing explanation, quote unquote. Um, of the terminated employees role in, in the suppression of the Hunter Biden lap, uh, laptop story. So Matt Taibbi, he's the independent journalist that uh, he's the one that released the Twitter thread or the Twitter files, if you uh, if you will. Over the weekend, a massive story, obviously detailing some of the corruption that went on behind the scenes in order to censor Americans and destroy our First Amendment and free speech. Uh, Matt Taibbi was the one to release that. Well, he also posted a link to an article from a, uh, from attorney, uh, attorney Jonathan Turley. Jonathan Turley, you see him all the time. He's a Democrat, but he's a fair Democrat. He's what I would call a liberal. Uh, if there's one that really exists in the United States, Jonathan Turley is, <laughs> is one. Okay. All right. So, uh, but he was writing for the New York Times or published a column in the uh, New York Times, or I'm sorry, New York Post forgive me. And he connected uh, Baker's work at Twitter with his prior operations where he promulgated the Russia collusion hoax. So this guy was a lead attorney, if not the head attorney in the DOJ peddling the Russia collusion hoax in 2016. Baker was the Clinton campaign's go-to speed dial, go-to speed dial contact 
quote unquote, this according to Jonathan Turley, to plant false claims about the Kremlin collusion and the Trump White House effort. Uh, the Clinton campaign lawyer, Michael Sussman, according to Jonathan Turley, picked Baker, that is Jim Baker, to give junk intelligence about a purported connection between then President Donald Trump and the Russian Alpha Bank. So that's who Jim Baker is. Jim Baker, Jim Baker was still working at Twitter. Why Elon Musk didn't fire this fool right away, I do not know. Maybe uh, he was just trying to give him a shot. Maybe uh, Jim uh, Baker sweet talked Elon Musk and convinced them that he wasn't the corrupt little punk that he is, uh, whatever it may be. He stuck around for a little while, but he's no longer there now. Here's what Jonathan Turley had to say as well. And I quote, uh, speaking of Jim Baker, he was effectively forced out due to his role and reportedly found himself under criminal investigation. He became a defender of the Russian investigations, despite finding a biased and even criminal conduct. After leaving the FBI, he was, he was kicked out of the FBI or, or, or left the FBI. After leaving the FBI, Twitter seemed eager to hire Baker as their deputy general. So now the Twitter files expose Jim Baker uh, for the corrupt little punk that he is. The first batch of Twitter files out on Friday revealed how Baker went on to play an instrumental role in suppressing blockbuster stories from the New York Post. So here it is. Former attorney, lead attorney, and the DOJ goes to Twitter, becomes a lead attorney at Twitter, and he promulgates or he helps to promulgate the story of, of the Russia collusion hoax, knowing damn well that Hunter Biden's laptop was real and legit, knowing damn well that he was lying, and here he was trying to shape the news. You're telling me there isn't a deep state? I'm sorry. This is this evidence. Uh, tells me that's completely wrong. There is a deep state. It's, it, I mean, it's it, it's insane. So Baker went on to play an instrumental role in suppressing the blockbuster stories from the New York Post and uh, about Hunter Biden's laptop and the Biden family business ventures, stories containing emails that implicated then-candidate Joe Biden. And that is the big news, right? That's the real news. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, what, what what's the word? That's the prize, right? The prize is this. Joe Biden is corrupt as all get out. The Hunter Biden's laptop revealed. We already know who Hunter Biden is. He's a horny crackhead. OK, get it. Got it. You know, whatever. Uh, he's also the son of a very corrupt politician, a corrupt senator, a corrupt vice president, now a corrupt president that was involved in business dealings where he was literally, literally making business deals with our adversaries across the globe. Can you imagine how much dirt the rest of the world has on Joe Biden and Jim Baker knew it and tried to hide it? Hide it? This is a guy that's supposed to be unbiased in the DOJ and then unbiased going to a quote-unquote neutral platform or social media platform and Twitter? Man, unbelievable. It says here that in do internal documents revealed that Jim Baker was the one that pressed some Twitter employees for more information that Biden's emails had been hacked. So in other words, he wanted Twitter employees to try to make it seem like this was hacked information. This So therefore, releasing any of the Hunter Biden laptop story went against Twitter's rules. It was hacked information when he knew damn well that it wasn't. And he's the lead attorney inside of Twitter, pressing employees to keep on spewing this nonsense. Here's a quote from uh, uh, Jim Baker. He said, caution is warranted. This is what he was telling other Twitter employees. Caution is warranted. Um, and that is the fact that, uh, you know, despite there never being any evidence that the emails were illegally hacked, he knew the truth. He came from the DOJ. Uh, so this is good news. Twitter fires him. And uh, this is uh, honestly, this is really good news. Here's a quote from Musk. In light of concerns about Baker's possible role in suppression of information important to uh, public the public dialogue, he was exited from Twitter uh, today. That was yesterday. All right. Uh, was uh, was he asked to explain himself? This was a uh, question from a user of Twitter. And then Musk simply explained, yes. Yes, his explanation was unconvincing. So why was last week's Twitter files delayed? Because the 
<laughs> because Baker, let me let me just read the quote. Let me just read. This was in a Twitter files. In a Twitter file supplemental thread, Taibi explained that last week's delay in publishing the first round of files was due to, guess what? Jim Baker was reviewing them without new Twitter ship le- uh, with new without new Twitter leadership knowing. Jim Baker, Jim Baker, Twitter's lead attorney, former DOJ attorney that helped promulgate the Russia collusion hoax, was overseeing or looking through the threads that were going to be released on the Twitter or from the Twitter files, the Twitter files thread. You know, there's no telling how much this guy tried to hide, censor, or what have you. So that was the holdup. That was the holdup, this little punk. So good news. He is gone. Um, And so, listen, that's good news for free speech in my uh, free, uh, good news for free speech, in my opinion. No doubt the Senate is going to try to make it hellacious, uh, for for Elon Musk, they are they are really scared as to what will come out, and I don't blame them. Given the little bit that we know, I'm sure there's much more uh, to uh, to find out about. All right, did I did I tell you guys? I'm not sure if I, I mentioned this. I don't did did I mention this story already, Gabe? I'm sorry, my mind is racing about Rod Stewart. Uh, Rod Stewart. Uh, reveals his 11-year-old son collapsed. He was rushed to the ho- a hospital with a suspected uh, heart attack. Now, wait, the, the heart attack hasn't been confirmed, uh, but a very, very scary. Um, and I think we all have a the same question. When we hear of a young person having a heart attack or suddenly dying, I think we all come to arrive at a same the same question in our head. So anyway, I hope that's not the case. Pray for Rod Stewart's son. No one wants to see their child uh, in danger. No one wants to see their child ill. Uh, It's just not a great feeling. It's not something that any parent should see. Uh, So hopefully uh, this young man will do well and is fine. So uh, if more news pops up on that, we will keep you posted on that. But uh, man, that is uh, that that is scary. You don't want to see your son having a uh, heart attack or a suspected heart attack. Again, it was not confirmed. So uh, now, all right, let me get to the nitty gritty. All right, let me get to the nitty gritty. All right, Carl, should we be concerned about what has happened uh, with the Senate? Uh, and I want to tell you what the ramifications are. Uh, and of course, the, the answer is yes. All right. The, the obvious answer is, is yes. Um, I am not depressed. I am not down. I, I know that we have a lot of work to do. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to stall as a result of a split House and a split Senate. Uh, but unfortunately, Democrats control the Senate completely now, which means that they no longer have to have uh, an equal amount of uh, Republicans represented uh, represented in these committees. Uh, that's uh, that's going to be a big deal. No doubt about it. But uh, let me let me just give you the 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 gist of what happened as a result of Herschel Walker losing to Raphael Warnock last night. And, and listen, it was, there's, there's some headlines out there that there were some shaky, some shady things going on in Fulton County uh, as to be expected. All right. Uh, Nonetheless, Herschel Walker came out. He conceded the race, no excuses. Republicans still could have and should have worked harder. Republicans didn't show up. Republicans seemingly uh, didn't have the greatest ga- uh, ground game. They were outspent. Herschel Walker was big time uh, in the 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 uh, the state of Georgia, uh, and sadly, I think Georgians, uh, certainly America, will live uh, to regret this to some uh, to some extent. And I want to say this: Hey, screw Mitch McConnell. Uh, you know, I I've uh, I I. <sighs> I look at Mitch McConnell and and here's 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 what I see. I see a man who unnecessarily spent nine million dollars in an Alaskan GOP primary between Lisa Murkowski, who by all intents and purposes is a Democrat herself, uh, but still a Republican nonetheless. All right. And Kelly Shabaka, who should have won that race and could have won that race. Were it not for the rank file or whatever it is 
voting system that they have that Lisa Murkowski helped to create just so she could win because she stinks as a senator. She's completely useless for the most part uh, as a senator in the Republican Party uh, at this point in time. Uh, So but Mitch McConnell in a primary between Republicans invest nine million dollars. Why is that a big deal? Because I believe it is my opinion. Listen, I can't prove this, uh, but I believe this to be true. If we would have invested some money in Arizona, I think Blake Masters would be the senator of Arizona right now instead of Mark Kelly. If we had invested some money in New Hampshire, I think Don Bulldog would have won his Senate race. For God's sakes, he spent $2 million, Don Bulldog did, in his Senate race and came relatively close compared to his opponent, uh, who spent 39 million bucks, 2 million bucks. So if we could have used uh, w- used some of that $9 million for his race, we would have control of the Senate. Mitch McConnell apparently didn't want control of the Senate because he didn't want people that Trump liked in the Senate. And as a result, um, you know, we it, it, it proves to me just how despicable the man is. I have no respect. I'm sorry. I know he's a Republican. Uh, going forward, we have to look forward. I'm not going to keep looking back, but I will be honest. I have no respect for this man because America's downfall decline. And I, I, I pray to God that we will experience a resurgence, if you will. But the decline that we're in as of now is in part uh, due to Mitch McConnell. And I want to make that emphatically clear. The guy, everything he did while under Trump's leadership, it, uh, as the you know, it, it, as the leader, getting the judges in kudos, he's almost nullified that. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. I'll explain why. And again, I'm not depressed. I just want you to understand. I, I woke up surprisingly. I wasn't depressed about this. I was last night. I was in despair for uh, I don't know five or ten minutes before I went to sleep, and it was like, okay, wh- what can we do? We now we know where everything is, where everything lies. We know what we have to do going forward. Uh, we have to have a serious battle, uh, battle, uh, battle, uh, battleground game, if you will, or ground game uh, leading into 2024. We messaging has got to be intact and we've got to work our butts off to register voters, register, 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 uh, get people out to vote like nobody's business. And those areas in swing states where Republicans still exist yet their chances are very slim of women winning if they don't ballot harvest or sign on onto this absentee balloting stuff. We've got to do it. We have no choice but to do it. All right, we have an opportunity to win the Senate in 2024. Uh, the odds are in our favor, but I'm not trusting anything anymore. All right, so let me just give you a brief rundown of what to expect from the uh, from both the, the Senate and the House for the next two years. So again, you know that the U.S. Senate was lost. Democrats, uh, you know, Democrats won it yesterday with Warnock's victory. Uh, the Democrats will now have a 51 to 49 seat majority uh, in the Senate. Uh, th- but despite the pickup, listen, despite Democrats pick up uh, one seat uh, uh, in a favorable election cycle, they didn't perform as well as they should have. Let me remind you, uh, for the last two two years, left wing talking heads uh, and the experts, so-called experts, were predicting that uh, Democrats will win Senate races in, in Wisconsin. This was a favorable year for them. All right. So in Wisconsin, they didn't. All right. In Ohio, they did not. North Carolina, Florida, Pennsylvania, and even Utah. Uh, in the end, only one of those states came out. They won. And that is Pennsylvania with John Fetterman, uh, the guy who is not there, uh, but will be a senator <laughs> that will be a senator come January. But just so you understand, Democrats underperform. But what's frustrating is is, as bad as even though Democrats underperformed, we could have performed better if we had good leadership and a good ground game and strategy around the country. I'm not saying everything the Republicans did was for not. Ronald McDaniel obviously reached out to different voters, uh, different minority voters and so on, et cetera, and tried to get a real ground game going. We just weren't as effective because we didn't pay attention seemingly to what Democrats were doing. 
with ballot harvesting. We weren't keeping up to speed. We weren't registering enough voters. We weren't on some college campuses straight up ballot harvesting like Democrats did where it was legal in states like Pennsylvania. We just didn't show up in too many places. So unfortunately, we're paying uh, we're 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 praying we're playing. Man, what am I saying? We're paying the price or we will pay the price to some extent. Uh, it's going to be a rough two years, but we're going to get through it together. All right. Uh, and I believe that uh, we will do some damage in 2024, albeit, although I'm not going to I'm not going to predict that we'll win the presidency. If the Democrats continue to have a better ground game than the Republican Party does, I don't expect to win the presidency. I'm just being honest with you. But we have an opportunity to take over the Senate and hopefully retain the House in 2024 because Democrats have many more seats to defend. Right. Uh, we had. uh, uh well, I, I forget what we had, but this the next election cycle, the Democrats will have 23 seats to defend compared to our 10 seats. And they have eight seats that are extremely vulnerable that we'll get into shortly here. All right. But here's now here's the rub. Democrats will now be able to approve Biden's left wing judicial nominees since they run the Senate. That's what the Senate does. And uh, so this is why I say that uh, Mitch McConnell is uh, he's out of touch. He's out of whatever whatever skills Mitch McConnell had, his Trump derangement syndrome has caused those to flee at whatever skills that he had in. And, and my understanding was that he was a master when it comes to the Senate and the workings of the Senate. His Trump derangement syndrome has gotten in the way. He's no longer effective. All of those judges, all of those nominees. OK, all right. That's great. I'm glad they are, they're there. I'm glad they exist. Now, Biden is going to do a lot more damage. Uh, than he already has, because they're going to be able to appoint judicial nominees with a much greater ease now that they control the Senate, the the Senate completely, and now that they control uh, the committees, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be very very tough in that regard. Also, uh, they can launch other uh, oversight investigations and issue subpoenas as they see fit. You, they're going to make it extreme life extremely tough on Trump. I'm just uh, all right. That, that's what they're going to do that wherever they can will power and use their power to make people's lives miserable so that they retain power and so that they can control the narrative leading into 2024. They're going to do it. All right. Now, uh, Fetterman gives Schumer Fetterman. Now, John Fetterman, the 51st, if you will, Senate seat because Warnock was tech uh, technically an incumbent. He gives uh, uh, Senator uh, Schumer a lot of wiggle room. All right. Uh, because he no, no no longer needs to pander to Joe Manchin or to Kirsten Cinema, so that gives him a lot of wiggle room, and I'm sure this is welcome news for Joe Manchin or Kirst Kirsten Cinema, who they're going to be contested in 2024. They're going to have some primary challenges. That's going to be two of these very vulnerable seats. All right, two of the eight very vulnerable seats are going to be Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. That's going to allow them to kind of just you know uh, uh, sneak into the background come out every once in a while, say something that sounds positive and probably or their goal will be to retain their seats. Hopefully their seats in, hopefully their seats go bye-bye, uh, but that's yet to be seen. I do think these seats are going to be harder to win than people expect. Just given the ground game, the Democrats, listen, we can't deny it. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Democrats have perfected ballot harvesting where it is legal. They have perfected the art of getting people that wouldn't typically vote registered to vote. We're, we're far behind in that. And so we have a lot of catch up to play uh, leading up to 2024. Uh, but here's what the GOP House can do with their nine seat advantage. I, uh, you know, ironically, about the same amount, if not the same majority that Nancy uh, Pelosi has. So it is a slim advantage for the GOP, but they can do a lot of things with this majority hat tip, by the way, to uh, David Bossie of Fox news. He wrote about this, but here's what they can do with the majority. Republicans can drive basically their common sense America first agenda. So they can drive that home. You don't have to like Trump to like an America first agenda. The economy was better. Our border uh, was secure. You were able to save and invest more. You know, retirements were looking pretty good. <clears throat> free speech for the most part uh, was still a thing. 
<laughs> All right. So uh, so it, that's you know, so these are things that the Republicans uh, can do, but they're going to have to stick together in order to be able to accomplish these things. They're going to have to act as one mind to deter Biden's agenda. Right. And to use the power of the purse to get some of the things that they want, some of the things that will help us out. We the people, they'll also be able to get the chamber back into regular order. Hopefully no more of these continued resolutions where every three months the sky is falling from these budget bills Uh, that has to go by the wayside. We need an annual budget. All right. We need an annual budget. We need to be able to put a check on this Biden administration. The Republican House will be able to do that to some extent with the power of the purse. As far as subpoena power is concerned, we're out of luck. As far as judicial nominees are concerned, we're out of luck. The left is going to go crazy when it comes to judicial nominees. You know, I wanted to talk about Katanji Brown Jackson saying some crazy crap the other day, but uh, I think I'll do a short on that. And uh, just a lot of crazy things coming out from the the left that I need to uh, discuss. But we'll, we'll save that for a short, perhaps tomorrow. Uh, that I'll um, that I'll release, or at least I'll respond to it in the podcast. I want to be more in depth, but right now I just want to catch you up to speed with what's what to look forward to or what to expect with this, with the Republican now controlling the House or will be as of January third, uh, and with this split or divided government that will be even more divided now. If you thought it was divided in the last, honestly, not just two years since two thousand sixteen. I don't think you've seen anything yet. So buckle up, Buttercup. Things are about things are about to get rough. So here's what divided government on legislation will look like. All right. So House Republicans can now bring their legislative priorities to the floor, and they can pass them. But Senate Senate Democrats don't have to act on them. And you can bet your bottom dollar they're not going to. So more than likely, what we're going to do is get stalled legislation. I got to be honest with you. I'm going to cry when they nominate judicial <laughs> judicial nominees. Uh, the subpoena power that they have uh, is going to be used with force, no doubt in my mind. That's going to be very discouraging. What is going to be discouraging is I'd rather for a standstill uh, between the uh, the lower and upper chambers of the the Congress than for anything to move forward. I I, I really would. I I appreciate the House being able to stall a lot of the Bidens a lot of Biden's agenda, but they're going to have to be good with narrative. Now in the Senate, here's what you can expect. Uh, Schumer is basically out of luck of moving any of uh, President Biden's wish list forward uh, unless he can get up to 60 votes, right? Uh, to break a filibuster. And there's going to be so much pressure on Republicans not to make that happen because you're going to be calling 202 224 3121 202 224 3121 to make sure that your senator doesn't cave to any wish list of Chuck Schumer uh, and Joe Biden. So you're going to be calling 202-224-3121. So basically, we're going to get a lot of stall uh, regulation. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, all right? Uh, Now, uh, there's going to be a lot of partisan maneuvering leading up to 2024. That's what you can expect. A lot of narrative. I told you before, this is going to be a narrative game uh, leading up to 2024. Very important to understand that Republicans are going to have to learn to communicate better. Presidential candidates are going to have to learn to communicate better. I'm talking about everybody. They're going to have to. Democrats are very good at messaging. Republicans, not so good. I love Donald Trump. I don't think he's that great at it. I, 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 I don't. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people would disagree with me. I wish his messaging was better. He's got to watch out. I told you I did that podcast. Check it out. Trump. Be, it, Trump has to be Reagan-esque. It's as simple as that. He's got to be optimistic. He's got to be able to share from his platform, whatever it is. I don't care if it's true social, Twitter, wherever he may be. His, He's got to be optimistic because the left is going, they're already coming after him like no one's business. They already have. That's going to intensify, if you can imagine, even more so. As a matter of fact, there was a headline up about him. Uh, if I can find it here, I'll pull it up and uh, see what uh, see what I can uh, find here because uh, the left is coming after him and they are not going to stop. So he's going to have to be Reagan-esque. He can't get himself in more Kanye West, Nick Fuentes type trouble. He's going to have to scrutinize every visitor that he sees at Mar-a-Lago. That's just the way it has to be. He volunteered for this. He's running for office. That's just the way that it has to be. 
I think he's he would do good for himself to show some contrition to just say the whole Nick Fuentes thing, Kanye West thing was uh, was a mistake. Everyone knows my record and what I've done for the nation state of Israel, but I want to make it emphatically clear that that was a setup and I meant no harm by it. Uh, and but I do apologize. So if he would say that, I'm, I'm telling you, I think uh, polls would uh, uh, swing back uh, in in his favor. That's a uh, uh, that is my guess anyway. I'm looking for Trump. Here it is. Trump organization found guilty in Manhattan DA's tax fraud case. This stuff is going to continue to come. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. It's going to continue to come. And this is what I think you're going to see more of with the Democrats being in charge. They are going to make life a living hell for any Republicans that they uh, that they can to make sure that they promote narratives that will keep them in power as far as the Senate uh, is concerned. So the House GOP, they have to focus on fiscal responsibility and transparency. They have to have legislative committee hear- hearings, business meetings. They have to pass, uh, uh, you know, appropriations bills on time with open and thoughtful discussion and the uh, and an amendment process. I don't necessarily expect uh, Democrats to follow suit in the future, but I want people to see how legislation is supposed to be done. I want voters to see it. So voters have a sense of peace and calm when they look at the way the Republicans do business. That's going to be very important. So no more of these $1 trillion omnibus spending bills that are passed in the dead of the night with no oversight whatsoever, and no one reads the bill. That's got to stop and that can stop with GOP controlling the house uh, that is a good thing you can expect democrats to moderate when it comes to inflation spending because again they're going to have 23 senate seats to defend 23 that is a lot all right they're going to have 23 senate seats to defend in 2024 and again none of them are guaranteed but i do want to give you the ones i told you that there are eight that are very vulnerable and then again and this according to uh, the Fox uh, Business Network. Um, and then again, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm not so I, I'm not so sure that they're as vulnerable as we may think if Republicans don't get their selves in order, don't get their ground game in order. And again, this is from David Bossy of Fox News, and he knows of what he speaks. But uh, given what we've seen over this 2020, uh, this 2022 midterm cycle, I'm not as convinced that these are easy wins for the Republicans in any way, shape, or form. But these are still the seats that are most vulnerable. And that is uh, Joe Manchin of West Virginia. You have Kirsten Cinema of Arizona. Let me stop and pause right uh, right now. Uh, actually, I'll go forward and I'll, I'll tell you why some of these seats I don't think are as vulnerable as we would like to believe. I hope that I'm wrong, but I'll tell you why they're not. But let me go on. So we have uh, Joe Manchin of West Virginia again. Kirsten Cinema, uh, Arizona, Montana, uh, uh, John Tester, Joe Tester. I believe it's John Tester. We have Nevada. We have Senator Rosen in Nevada. We have in uh, Ohio, Senator Sherrod Brown. We have in uh, Pennsylvania, Casey. We have in Michigan, Debbie Stabenow. And in Wisconsin, we have uh, Senator Baldwin. So these are going to be the most vulnerable seats. Here's where... Um, here's where I, I, I'm not sure that this is true. And, and, and by the way, by contrast, it's it, it, it's difficult to find any endangered incumbent Republicans. All right. Uh, so Republicans stand a good chance of keeping at least the amounts of seats that they have now, which is 49. And again, the Democrats have 23 to defend. Doesn't mean they'll lose, but they have 23 that they'll have to defend. So the odds are in our favor. But when I look at now, West uh, Joe Manchin in West Virginia. I'm not so sure. Joe Manchin, in my opinion, should have been gone a long time ago. For whatever reason, the people of Virginia continue to vote for this man. Now, they screwed him with this little mini or he screwed them with this mini Green New Deal. But two years is a long time. Two years is a long time. And he can say and do things leading up to the 2024 election to endear himself to the republic or to the voters in West Virginia again. And he may, he may pull it off. Arizona, did you see what happened in Maricopa County? Kirsten Cinema, she's in danger. Did you see what happened in Maricopa County? I'm not so sure. Any place that's considered a quote-unquote swing state, I'm just not sure of anymore. 
I, I'm just not sure of. Now, I, I think Manchin will probably be the most vulnerable of the states that I'm about to mention. But again, I just told you why I'm not so sure about him. Uh, Nevada? Hmm. <laughs> Did you see how long it took to get results in Nevada? I mean, Pennsylvania? Casey is vulnerable? None of us thought that John Fetterman would win. All right. Michigan. Debbie Stabenow. Did, did you think Gretchen Whitmer would remain the governor? I, I with, with Tudor Dixon nipping at her heels seemingly so well, turns out Democrats had a serious ground game, so they weren't as concerned. They had ballot harvesting going on. They had uh, uh, they, they, they had uh, mail-in ballots happening. They had absentee ballots happening. They had Voter registration happening up the wazoo. We thought we would do much better. Not so much. Wisconsin, Ron Johnson eats out a win that should have been a landslide. I, I, I'm, I'm just not sure. So some of these races are that are supposed to be a fait accompli. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure. So here are the issues that the GOP must offer solutions to. They have to be emphatically clear. They have to be concise. They have to take the fight. They have to get in front of a microphone, a television camera, and take the fight to the Democrat Party. It's got to be inflation. It's got to be open borders. It's got to be crime. Inflation, open borders, crime. Your pocketbooks, your physical uh, safety, the nation's sovereignty, and how that impacts not just open borders. They've got to tell stories. They've got to tell the nightmarish, horrific stories of little girls and little boys being trafficked and people being murdered and jobs being lost and schools being dumbed down as a result of this massive illegal immigration. Oh, and by the way, it's not you guys heard about this, right? It's not even on Biden's radar radar. It's not one of the things that are most important to him right now, the open borders. Republicans have to make their voices heard. And you do too. 202-224-3121. Whenever you get in trouble, whenever you're frustrated with your congressman or senator in a firm uh, but cordial way, uh, express your concerns and make sure that we take back America. Guys, again, I so thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. Please, 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 please support my uh, sponsors. That is my pillow. Dot com. Again, Christmas is coming up soon. Go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener square. Use the promo code Carl. You can use my name. Um, obviously, use my name, C-A-R-L, and get whatever deals are available uh, to you from towels to bed sheets to slippers, uh, The uh, my slippers that are out again. I mean, literally marked down a $49.98 unbelievable price just in time for Christmas. You can check those out or you can give them a call 1-800-858-0263. And please, please, please subscribe uh, to uh, my new sponsor. Man, I'm so, feel so good to say that. Uh, Epic TV, Epic TV. If you guys like Epic Times and you should, they do great journalism there. All right. If you love Epic Times, you will love Epic TV. The censorship Free video platform with uh, original news programs like Crossroads. Again, the Larry Elder Show. If you miss Larry Elder, Facts Matter, American Thought Leaders, and documentaries investigating critical issues that are not covered anywhere else. Again, watch unbiased, truthful news in Epic TV on any device of yours. A special offer for our viewers here at the Carl Jackson uh, Show podcast. Just sign up and start uh, watching. No credit card is required. No strings attached. If you decide to su- uh, to subscribe within 14 days, it's just $1 for two months. So go to watchepic.com slash Carl Jackson and subscribe. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Again, subscribe to the podcast, wherever podcasts are found. Find me on social media, The Carl Jackson Show. Uh, and until next time, do not grow weary doing good. God bless you.